Hello and welcome to San Diego where we've come to take an early look at the new 2024 Porsche Taycan. Now I know what you're thinking, this looks a lot like the old car but in classic Porsche style what's important here is what they've done underneath and in this case it's pretty much a new car, let's take a look. It's been four years since Porsche launched the Taycan, if you can believe it, and while that original car had it relatively easy as one of just a few quick EV saloons on the market, its successor has to contend with a wave of new rivals from BMW, Mercedes and even Lotus, each with blistering on-paper performance figures, rapid charging, long ranges and bags of futuristic in-car tech. So the first thing you see is these new look lights, and by the time you see this video, the tape will have come off these, revealing a more flat, muscular look, they tell us. And there's this new crease on the front bonnet, which you can really see from inside the car. It helps to position the car on the road. It's also been done with an eye on aerodynamic efficiency. More aero work here. You can see these wheels. Apparently, they add 40 kilometers of range compared to the wheels that the Taycan launched with back in 2019. Increasing the Taycan's range was a priority for this round of updates, and every variant now claims more miles per charge courtesy of all the aero boosting and loss cutting tweaks Porsche has made to the bodywork and drivetrain. As a result, even the higher riding twin motor Cross Turismo is rated up to 381 miles on the combined cycle. Not only does it not look very different, but you can still have it as a Sport Turismo, a Cross Turismo like we've got here with the cladding on the sides, or as the standard saloon. You can still have it with a single motor at the back, or a choice of three twin motor four wheel drive powertrains. And the most powerful now puts out over 900 brake horsepower when it's driving in overboost mode. And that makes it pretty much the quickest car you can buy in the UK right now. It'll get from naught to 62 miles an hour in just 2.4 seconds. But maybe even more impressive than that is what they've done to the battery underneath. It's now 105 kilowatts in capacity and nets up to 35% more range depending on spec. And that means that the most efficient car, the single motor rear wheel drive car, can now do 422 miles on a charge. That's huge. And if you're driving it in the city, over 500 miles, making this once again, one of the longest range electric cars you can buy. And there's a load of new neat little tricks as well. Like the charger cover is now electric as standard. Porsche's tested it. It works in the snow. It works in the ice. Don't worry about that. There's also a new system where the car will automatically hike itself up by 55 mil when you open the door, making it easier to get in. And if you join me inside, you'll see where some of the real changes have been made to make this car better to live with on a daily basis. It's a story of evolution rather than revolution in here, but the headlines are dramatic upgrades for the infotainment and a raft of new kit that comes as standard, including ambient lighting, a wireless phone charger, and a reversing camera. Best news inside, if you're a fan of buttons and switches, is that Porsche remains committed to physical controls. It hasn't taken them all away. You've still got the drive mode selector, the volume controls, the speech controls on the steering wheel, the cruise controls are on a stalk underneath. They're all still very nice to twiddle and poke and, and play with. But the touchscreen is probably the biggest news for 2024. You've still got the three screen setup. I actually can't see what's on that passenger screen. It's coated in a special film, which means I won't get distracted when I'm on the move, which is good news because Porsche's in, added a new streaming service. You can have Amazon Prime, Disney streaming services. You can connect your headphones and your passenger can watch films and TV shows as you're driving along. Porsche's also worked quite closely with Apple to make sure the CarPlay is as functional as it can be for 2024. You can now control settings in the car itself from CarPlay without disconnecting your phone, without leaving that interface. And just as important is what Porsche has done to the charge network interface in this car. It can now plan your journey in such detail that you know exactly how much capacity you're going to arrive at your destination with. You can see how many chargers are available at each of the nearby charging stations. You can even look at reviews of restaurants that are near the charger you've chosen to make sure you've got somewhere good to eat. Now, because this is a prototype, I can't tell you exactly what this is like to drive. You'll have to wait until uh, later in the year to find out exactly how it performs when you're driving it in anger. But what I can tell you is that Porsche has invested a huge amount in making sure this car feels different to drive compared to the current Taycan. Air suspension is now standard fit across the range. The previous entry level car used to run on coils and you can also upgrade to an active ride system which basically cuts out any roll from the driving experience if you want it to. You can program it so the car doesn't squat or dive at all when you're doing hard accelerations runs. 
and that's really important because this is a very quick car even the entry level car will now get from 0 to 62 in 4.8 seconds that's really really quick and the top run car is now quicker than a ferrari 296 if you really want it to and because it's a taycan it'll do it again and again and again until you're feeling quite sick there's also lower resistance tires which help to maximize range and the brakes can now send as much as 400 kilowatt back to the battery so every time you slow down you're sending maximum charge back to that battery helping to cut any loss on the move. A lot of people say that race technology doesn't really ever make its way to the road when manufacturers talk about the car in your driveway having Formula One or WRC technology inside it. A lot of people think that's not really true, but the new Taycan does have a feature that you'll find on a Formula E car, push to pass mode. That comes with the Sport Chrono package and it liberates as much as 40 kilowatts extra from the motor. Uh, for as much as 10 seconds, so you can, you can get around that lorry that's in front of you double quick. Right then, back in Los Angeles, we've just spent a whole day driving the new Porsche Taycan on American freeways at speeds of about 65, 70 miles an hour. We've done 301 miles in total. We've landed here with 16 miles showing on the odometer. So you can see just how much that real world range has been increased by. We're gonna plug it in now and you'll see just how fast this new Taycan can charge. Right, plugged in three minutes ago, we've already added 15 kilowatt hours to the battery. That shows you how fast this car can charge. Now we're charging currently at a rate of 317 kilowatts. That's faster than any EV I've ever seen. It's certainly faster than anything you can buy in the UK right now. A 10 to 80% top up, Porsche says, will now take about 18 minutes if the ambient temperature is 15 degrees. That compares with 37 minutes before. 80 minutes is genuinely enough time just to go to the bathroom and get a cup of coffee. With 150,000 Taycans now on the road, Porsche has received a good deal of feedback about what it's like to live with on a daily basis. The takeaway is that drivers want more clarity about when and where they should charge, and then they want to spend less time overall doing it. We're going to talk now to the Vice President of the Taycan Model Line, Kevin Geek, who's behind all these changes. He can tell us everything about how they've achieved this. Let's find out more. Kevin, thanks for joining us today. I reckon you've probably got one of the hardest jobs in the world, improving the Porsche Taycan, which is already a brilliant electric car, sets the benchmarks in so many areas. Where do you start? Yeah, we start in discussing what, what would be the most, what our customers are asking for, and this would be the range. Yep. So we started how could we optimize the range, and the second thing what we are very interested in is to optimize the speed of charging. That means also power of charging, and that was the, the two most difficult things we were talking about. Mm. But the, the biggest thing, and what we're seeing right now, is that charging speed. That, that's going to be transformative, isn't it, for using this car day to day? Yeah, it, it's, it's transformative. We think it's benchmark in, in, in the segment and, and we're pretty proud what we have achieved. You, you have seen right now we have up to 330 kilowatts seen, so the official rate is 320 kilowatts, what we, what we say. So this we could achieve uh, through a com complete new charging system reintroduced and that takes up to 400 amps. Uh, it allows 400 amps and that, that's also the base for this fast charging and it's, it's very new in the in the field i think you will know, not find again yeah we've spent all day in the car together and you were laughing at me before we got here because i was getting nervous about how much range we had yeah. left you weren't worried at all you've, you've invested so much in making this car more efficient more predictable how have you achieved that so for the efficiency we worked at the design we worked at the aerodynamics we optimized nearly everything the tires the wheels the, the complete front design so we optimized the aerodynamics we optimized uh, the recuperation we increased it from 290 kilowatts up to 400 kilowatts but we optimized also a few little things we have a, a new a new charging device in the car and all of this we reduced the weight as well of the car and all the combination leads to a better efficiency up to, to 30%. Mm. And I think driving fans want to know, this isn't all about charging, this isn't all about efficiency, is it? The, the chassis has been almost completely reworked as well. What are the highlights of that for you? So we offer now as a, as a standard uh, an air suspension system and then we offer as an option our new system, it's uh, called Active Ride. 
and this system allowed, allows us uh, to control each, each wheel on each corner and uh, the car is like sticking with glue on the street, like, so you have still a lot of driving fun. Well, we've been here for just a few minutes. The car is genuinely nearly full. So we're going to head back now. Kevin, thanks so much for having us. And uh, yeah. Thank you for having you here. Thank you. Thank you. The new Taycan is now available to order ahead of customer deliveries beginning in spring. Prices start at £86,500 for the base model saloon and climb all the way up to £162,100 for the Turbo S Sport Turismo. You can read all the details now at autocar.co.uk.